So my first question for you is, um, what do you feel like are the keys to proficiency in any mm -hmm. technique? And how is the curriculum uh, being changed in order to orient uh, us more in that direction? Okay. When I first got here, uh, one of the things we discussed before I even got hired, it was, you know, what's your plan? What's your vision for the department? What, what are you bringing to the table? And before I just kind of said, well, here's what we're going to do. The, the goal is to build proficiency, right? Is to build a skill set, not just go through a series of classes where you're, you're, you're passing them, but you're actually building a set of skills. Now, people learn at different rates. You've been through this, especially in a quarter system. It goes by pretty quick, yeah. and so sometimes you're in a class, and you might, you know, you're, you might build that skill fairly quickly. Maybe it's palpation, maybe you know, motion palpation. It might be, let's say, cervical chair adjusting. Right? Some people just pick it up. Some people just work at it and work at it, or side posture, whatever it is. So what we need to really create is a process in place that introduces those skills and then has them reinforced or kind of uh, looked at again, assessed again, as you move through the curriculum. So one of the things that we put in place, a group of us met, some people from the health center, people in technique, and we developed what we call uh, the te the um, a technique rubric. Basically what it does is it looks at all the skill sets, all the pieces, um, on, a, on a piece of paper, we want to make this digital, so we want to put it on an iPad, something like that. But the goal was, can we look at the different things, like you know, patient setup and all those things. Those are one thing, but really it comes down to you know, force generation, biomechanical advantage, things that have to be built over a period of time. And along the way, you as a student get assessed at that skill, rated on some level and then assessed again down the road. And so this is all new, right? This is this, this is new. Of assessment has never been done before. Well, I can't say never been okay. done. There are schools doing these kinds of things. Okay. This isn't completely brand new. No one's doing it at all. Okay. You know, our rubric might be unique uh, the way we've done it, but there are plenty of schools looking at this idea because all play all schools in higher education, especially healthcare, are looking at ways to measure actual skills. Not just did you pass your class, not did you, you know, finish that project, but can you do the things that you know, you're, you're being trained to do? Yeah. And so when we started this, it was, uh, for me, it was about the technique program, right? I'm looking at, okay, let's align these courses. One of the easiest things to point out is when I first got here, Diversified 2 was like several quarters after Diversified 1. Now, I know why that is. I mean, I don't need to get into all that explanation. I went and found out why is this it just looked odd to me. You have diversified one, and then like three or four quarters later, there's diversified two. Well, if that's a sequence of courses, it makes no sense. Well, it wasn't a sequence actually. It was a. It was put in place as you know. Hey, we need to do a refresher. We need to make sure that kind of check in, right. do these so again. You know, add some other picture, things. Right. right. Yeah. Um, and then we're adding some things that in there as well. So one of the things we did is we, we need to align that. We need Diversified 2 coming after Diversified 1. We need Gonstead analysis, then Gonstead A, then Gonstead B. And in some places, students would get, I think, analysis first, and then they wouldn't get Gonstead A for a quarter. So you were seeing these things that were not in alignment. Now, the, the reason they weren't in alignment is kind of complex, but the state of California requires or, or prescribes really a certain number of hours maximum in a quarter. Oh, so you of can't. Technique classes. No, no, of, oh. of any courses. Of so any they courses. say, here's the maximum hours you can have. You can go a little above in, in a couple of spots if you need to, but they're saying you can't, you can't just add classes. You can't say, well, this quarter you know, is going to have this many hours and we're so going to add like all. You can't th exceed 24 credits or something like that. Things like that. that. Okay. okay. Now, those of you, uh, obviously, students look and sometimes there's a quarter, you're like, man, this is a really light quarter, and all of a sudden the next quarter, boom, it just hits. Right. Well, because you've got a sequence of prerequisites, and then you've got to make sure certain things come into play. So I went back, I guess all that to say this, I went back, I looked at the, the thing from a, the curriculum from a technique perspective. Here's what we need to do in technique. You need to have palpation, motion palpation, get into analysis, diversified one, diversified two. Okay, that's easy to look at on paper. Oh, we need to do Gonstead analysis, then A, then B, and you know, it looks easy on paper until I started moving some things around and realized, wow, we've got to either split some classes apart, uh, move some things in different places, and as I did that, the rest of the department started looking at this and it became 
more global. Because originally it was just a technique thing. It was like, oh, we need to, we're going to create this technique track. That was the original vision. But as I started coming into this, we realized we have a number of places where we could do better. And so we all got together and started looking at this thing and saying, well, there's certain skill sets not adjusting that also need to be better sequenced. Um, certain courses that maybe are better aligned to set up other things, right? So other departments started looking at this and getting involved in it and, you know, where could we uh, put these classes in? Then they started looking at, well, what about in the health center? What about before you get into, uh, before you take boards? Yeah. Um, a big one. So I went to the students, right? I said, okay, here's what we want to do. And a, one of the biggest things that came out of the student input, which was great, was that extremity adjusting was way too late. Mm -hmm. That it was after you were already in student clinic. And then I was hearing students coming to me and saying, I've got a, you know, an elbow, a shoulder problem, but my intern can't take care of me because they haven't had this class yet. Exact okay, experience. well, yeah. there you go. Yeah. And, I, and again, I'm looking at this going, wait a minute, what, what's, why is that? Yeah. Well, it's, it goes back to these, this numbers thing, right? I got all these, can't put these, can't just move these big classes and stick them in here and yeah. now I have 500 hours. It's not going to so work. So I've been hearing from a lot of students that it seems like there's a lot more courses now earlier yeah. in the curriculum than there was previously with a lot of these new changes. Yeah. Did you, have you noticed that? when? That's probably true okay. because there was some really light quarters. Definitely. But what had to happen is sometimes you have to move something you know, to one spot so that you can create movement in another place. Not that it's going to be moved again. It, that's never the goal. Right. But by sometimes it feels like you're, you're suddenly filling up that spot that used to be kind of a, a light place, and the, the, the word gets out, oh, this quarter's you know, it's a lot lighter. Well, we have this class now. You do? We never had that. Well, it's because we moved something to a better location. Now it's being taught in two places, which creates some challenges in and of itself, right. for a duration, so you get like this map we were talking about yeah. where it says, okay, now this class is in, let's make something up, freshman C, and it's also being taught in sophomore A till, you know, summer of 2017. So you'll see that on these maps that you'll be able to look at. Yeah. As soon as those, because what happens, you move the class up here, well, now those people that have, it's passed, you still got to teach them that material. Right. So they have to go through the, the program, and then as soon as you're done, that class disappears, and now it's, permanently located in a different spot. Yeah. So without this map, it sounds like, I mean, y you have the map, obviously. The registrar has the map. Right. People can find the map if they want Yeah, it. yeah the so goal is to make sure students can see it. Yeah. It's not supposed to be hidden yeah. and secretive or so, anything. So um, in terms of the quarter system, yeah. how many more quarters until the whole all transition? Until it's all done? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh -oh. No, no, no this is good. It's, these are great questions because... What happens is you can only you can you can't move everything at once, right? right? Yeah. So you had to look at priorities. So remember, this all started with me going, "Hey, I want technique to align department. the technique department," and then it, I heard this. Well, we need to move extremity adjusting and and it, some other components earlier, not just for the technique department, but to better prepare our students for the boards because certain material is in those courses, mm -hmm. and what would happen is you'd get to your boards and go, "I haven't had some of this stuff," so you're in a board review trying to you know, fill in the gaps, and then there you go. Well, again, this is the challenge of having a very prescriptive state law that says you can only have so many hours, so you gotta, it's like a chess game, you gotta move these here. So I had to clear out spots, this is what I'm, it's not, it's not like I did all this, but right. I'm looking at this plan, I was sort of tasked with this, and I'm looking at this stuff, and it's, it's almost like Tetris, and that I've gotta clear these spots, and move this over here, and then this can come down here, and I got two different curriculum to deal with, a 12 quarter and a 14 quarter. Right. If I only had one, this would be a lot easier. Yeah. But we got two. That being said, the priority became, we gotta move that extremity adjusting, right? So that became one of the first things, we gotta clear spots for that, that's being moved, right? That's gonna take, by the time it's all moved and done, almost two years. Two years, okay. Almost two years. Some okay. of them, I think the latest goes into 2018 at some point, but it's like one or two classes. No, not a big, you know, big chunks, but like right. a couple of residual things will be there for a while because you're moving them up, you know, four quarters as a year. Yeah. So minimum, if it took you two quarters to even be able to make that move, that means a year and a half, right? And Which sounds like a long time, but I've been here for a year and it's gone by it's, like that. Yeah. So I yeah. know like two years when I graduate, like... 
Right. It's actually not a very long time at all. No. For everything that you're accomplishing. No. So, you know, those are the things that made some of the earlier moves or forced that, like, we got to do that earlier, make room for different things. Um, and then we come back to what it all, where it all started, which was technique. Yeah. Now, we're actually, now, we're pretty well aligned. I mean, we're, we're, we're getting to where uh, Diversify 2 has been moved into a slot, so we'll be double taught for a little while, you know, two spots in the, in the curriculum. Um, toggle's been moved earlier because that, that was so late in the system as well. We get that moved a bit earlier. The goal being, ultimately, to get to a place where we can launch two different labs. I, for like, lack of a better name, it's Full Spine Lab 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. They actually start next quarter. The first, it, the first version of this starts next quarter. The goal of that, remember this is all about skills. Right, developing so, specific skills. Right, now yeah. full spine, manual full spine adjusting just takes more time. We, we all know that. Yeah. Um, instrument assisted or table assisted adjusting, it doesn't take as long. It's not to belittle anything. It's just that it doesn't take as long to, to, to get competent. I wouldn't say proficient, yeah. I would say competent at it, right? Our goal is to get you competent not necessarily consistent, right? Because by the time you get into the health center, now you need to work on your consistency. That's that next stage of proficiency. So our, our, our target is competent, yeah. not necessarily consistent. So our docs that are with you in full spine one are supposed to be in full spine two. That way you get six months of consistent feedback from somebody. So there are a couple of things supposed to happen. One, you don't really do any new material. You work on what you've already been taught. And in your, let's say you come into this full spine lab and let, let's say everything's going great for you but your, your side posture is really where you need help, mm -hmm. that's what we work on. We get that honed in on you. Now you still got to demonstrate to me as a professor, as one of the instructors, that you can do the analysis, work your patient up, show me that you can adjust the full spine. But in the beginning, if we identify, man, you need some work on your side posture from both of us. You, you've, you've acknowledged that and yeah. I've seen it. Now we know what you need to work on. So it's not going to be, or it shouldn't be, you know, this week is low back, uh, this week is chair, this week is, it's, it's, it's focused Working on what... The, with the patient, or with the student's weakness. Yeah, basically. what you need, yeah. all right? Because I have no doubt there will be a, 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 a large enough group of people going, yeah, side posture. Because yeah. for me, that was the one that... It's a tough one. It was a tough one. Yeah. And so we work on that for a bit. But there's going to be people in that group as well that maybe their side posture is fine, but you know, maybe there's a group that want to work on Gonstead cervical chair. So was this part of the original vision that oh, you yeah. came to the college with? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really? It, was, really? it was part of the whole plan was yeah. create this track so that you get to this point, and then you have six months where you work with a couple of doctors. Ideally, right, somebody who's you know, kind of diversified, you know, that's their, that's their bent. Yeah, and somebody who aligns with what you want to right. practice. And, and somebody who is proficient in Gonstead. Now, we're really blessed because we have a couple of docs who, are, who can do both. Yeah. You know, um, and so, you know, it's not that you just have somebody who's diversified and somebody who's Gonstead, but you need, and those two people, you need those skill sets. And sometimes you do have somebody who's like, they are a Gonstead doc, that's who you want to work with. Well, you know what, if I want to learn Gonstead, I probably want to learn Gonstead chair from them. Or, or have them help me get proficient. Completely. Completely. So that's, that's kind of the, the goal. And then from there, you know, once you go through your full spine too, now you should be into the health center. Awesome. Right? Student, student, I think in one of the curriculum, in one of them, you're in the second full spine lab while you're in student clinic one. Yeah. In the other one, I believe it's right before you start student clinic. That's the best locations we could find for so, it. So tell me a, a little bit about kind of the process you went sure. through with the academic planning group. I can't imagine it was uh, easy all the time to, yeah. you know, put this into place. But right. How did you get everybody integrated on board and uh, allow everybody to kind of see the, the bigger picture that... Well, I got to tell you, it really was a good group. I mean, because every, once people saw it wasn't just a technique thing, mm -hmm. um, and and probably the people who have, have been around here longer, you know, Dr. Donaldson, Dr. Lindemann, they've seen this curriculum go through all kinds of changes over sure. you know twenty years. Yeah. Um, so their insight was really good in that they've seen some of this before. You know, some of this is not new. You know, you think it's new, and they go, "Well, actually, we've done something they like that something before." Like it, yeah. um, but. When you have a group of people coming together, and that's what we did, I may have been the one who did the, the nuts and bolts sitting there going, and I can't tell you how many times I went from page to page and back and then having to change something and then not seeing something and bringing it to the group and have everybody pour over it and go, well, what about this or what about that? Or 
for instance, something came out while we were doing this was we need more radiology earlier, right? It's, it's coming so late in our curriculum in places. We were, we were trying to do some things in technique. We were trying to do some things to, you know, in, I think in one of the anatomy courses, but we needed to cut some, some stuff earlier. So, okay, hold on a second. We kind of stopped the process. Can we move rad one earlier? Can we shift that a bit earlier? So we, you know, these are the kinds of insights that we got along the way. We're, that's why I say this isn't my plan. This became the college's plan. It started out with me saying, hey, technique needs to be revised. Yeah. But as we move forward, other, other department chairs and other people in the room started going, well, how do we better equip our students for boards? How do we how do we so integrate this? Is boards going to happen at the same quarter for people, or is that going to affect boards at all? Do you have any you idea? You know, I, I don't know what to say about national boards because you know it used to be every six months, and then they said we're going to do it every, every quarter, quarter yeah. and then they said we're going to do some online version, and you know, I, we can't plan our world around the boards, right? right? But, but our mission needs to, in, to certainly prepare the students to be ready for this yeah. as best we can. Yeah. Um, and so that's where some of these moves came. And, and even on a bigger picture, remember this whole idea of skill sets and right. critical thinking and clinical reasoning and integration of your exam procedures, not just technique, but your physical exam procedures into an assessment of a patient, being able to do a report of findings, being able to do a soap note, being able to, do, you know, to be ready to be a clinician. Yeah. All these things, you know, it's now it's, it's almost impossible to make it perfect. There's just no way. But we started to see places where there could be crossover, where there could be threads. You're gonna hear that a lot. These curricular threads, right? These skill sets, these, um, another thing that comes out of this that students probably don't hear much about, but it's a big part of, of what we have to look at is the CCE meta competencies. Mm. The, what are the skills that you're required or we're required to assess and, and demonstrate back to our accreditors, right? Yeah. And those are things like I'm talking about, your ability to think through a case, you know, um, and analyze and adjust the spine, um, refer, it's all, all those like things. like all those stern student learning objectives that we see in the syllabus all the time. Those are all tied to some metacompetency. They all tie together. So that's why you hear that, that language of, oh, curricular threads or learning objectives, learning outcomes. Yeah. They all have to tie to something at the end of this. You know, by the end of the day, sometimes, I, and I ask this a lot in my classroom, it says, what are you here to be? You know, a chiropractor. Okay, so you're not here to be a philosopher, you're not here to be a biochemist, you're not here to be a neurologist, you're not, right, all those pieces come, come to up. create this thing you want to be, but that focus in that class, that's not the end game, right? Yeah. So, and sometimes educators, we all do it, we all, you know, we, this is so important, but it's part of a fabric, it's, it all weaves together. So when you look at the curriculum, that's what we're trying to do. So even in the philosophy courses, we've moved some things so they're earlier in the curriculum. And there's places where they're better integrated, and and they shouldn't be standalone classes. You know, those ideas should be throughout. Same with business, right? Right, right. They kind of pepper their curriculum. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my question to you is, um, a lot of changes, right? And yeah. there's always some adversity to change. You know, challenges. Some challenges. And opportunities. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's some. Uh, I talked to Donaldson about like growing pains, kind of thing. Good way to put it. Um, and so. Sure. You know, from your perspective, this has been super helpful for me, Good. and hopefully it'll be helpful for other students yeah. as well. But like, how, if you were in a student's shoes, mm -hmm. how would you recommend that we kind of respond to these changes, or where do we go to seek out information to to integrate with the changes more easily? Right. Well, we we didn't realize that uh, there were things I didn't even see coming. Okay, that's why I learned real quick. Went to the student council. Here's what's coming. Here's what we're, here's you know here's the plan. Here's where we're going, and there was some good feedback that came back from that, uh, and and I even had some people come and say, well, could we see these things like you know in advance? And it was like it didn't even dawn on me that that you would need that. I mean, you know, it's, this is the blind spots. We all have them, right? We, we have blind spots. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I, and I think the first time it really became obvious to me is when somebody said, oh, well, if you're if you're offering that in two places, then I don't need to take it now, I could take it later. I said, wait a minute, if you don't take that now, because it was like offered in that quarter, and they said, oh, but it's also offered here. I, could, I said, wait a minute, it's not. It might not be offered It might, there might not be there, and yeah. then you're trying to go, you know, I said, it'll be there for a while, but 
it, so it, it was offered in two different spots in the curriculum, and it didn't even dawn on me that somebody would think of it that way. I just looked at it as like, no, if it's moved here, then you take it when you're fourth quarter, and then you don't worry about it after that. And somebody who was fourth quarter said, well, I, maybe I don't need to take it now. Maybe I could do something else. I went, I didn't even think of that, right? So that's where the request for these, these maps, and the map is just a one page, you know, shows you every quarter and the classes in it. Um, and it should say on it how long something where it's in two places, how long it's going to be there. It'll say new for spring or new for winter of 2017. And then wherever it w was being moved from, it'll say through this long. So here's what I tell a student. When it shows up in your quarter, take it. Yeah. Don't try to play the, oh, well, it's going to be there for another year or so. Because one thing that is very difficult in this, in this curriculum is to guarantee that that class is gonna be at one o'clock on Wednesday where you think it's been all this time because those schedules are built around one, the student, these dynamic changes that are coming, but also the instructors. And if an instructor changes and their availability changes, that class may not be there. This happens occasionally, not a lot, but I've heard this being in the academic planning group where, or even somebody's come in my office, I've been trying to take this class for the last three quarters. I'm, I'm only here for two more quarters. What are we going to do? Well, those are, those are the things we're trying to avoid by saying, yeah. take it take when it, it shows yeah. up. Don't try to you know, play around with your schedule by going, oh, should I wait one? Should I not? Yeah, um, maybe two years from now when all these are integrated and we have kind of a more set schedule, yep. then maybe people can play around with things in that way. But maybe. for now... Like, it just seems like the best solution is if, just to like... If it shows up yeah, in your, in your yeah. take it. Don't, don't try to wait a quarter. Just, man, when it shows up, take it. You know, most of the time you're going to get um, some classes that are combined. So you have some uh, earlier and later quarter students in there. That's not a bad thing, by the way. Because no, sometimes yeah, you get I, some good flavor to yeah, the process. Really cool. But in some cases, there, there may be two separate offerings. And that the other part of this, you said, what should I do as a student? Yeah. If they're far enough apart, and it's a separate offering. Now, this is only occasional. It just depends on how it lands and, and the number of students. I mean, if we've got 140 people, we've got to split that into two classes. You, you don't want to miss your cohort, your group, because that's going to be focused on where you are. Mm -hmm. And if you miss that opportunity and you take it maybe with a later group, you may get a different slant that doesn't have the impact for you. Right. So, so you want, that's why I say take it when it shows up, you know, and then you don't have to worry about it. It's there. It was, and by the way, that's how they count the numbers up, too. They look and go, oh, well, there's so many sophomore Bs. So they plan the number of labs. They plan this out. And if yeah, you miss that, that. Yeah. sometimes you run into some real problems. Yeah, that's really helpful. I've never heard it uh, phrased that way. But it makes yeah. sense why everybody's so focused. Oh, you're a sophomore B. Or, oh, you're a yeah. sophomore, too. Like, this yeah. is your track because all of the scheduling is being done based on that. The number of labs, the number of classes, yeah. all of that. Um, so that, that's really helpful. I and I even thought of that. So if you're sitting there doing registration and they ask you that, oh, you're this, and then they have this set of, they've, we've planned all that out and, right. and manned those labs ahead of time where we've tried. And, and, if, and if you don't take it then and we have fewer offerings or, you know, and then later on you try to add, what if you're that 21st or that, you know what I mean? Totally. Don't do that to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> don't I've do that. I've done that to myself. <laughs> stop it. Okay. So just stop it. Right? <laughs> Well, I hope that helps. Yeah, that totally helps. Um, I I don't feel like I have any more questions. Is oh. there anything that you don't feel like we covered that you kind of hmm. want to um, make available for people um, in terms of the process well, or in terms of the... the let me put it this way. I know for a long time Open Labs has been used as... Um, First of all, it could be used a lot better by students. I mean, there are times when, you know, the first two weeks, first nobody, two weeks nobody's in there. Nobody's in there. And you've got two and three instructors sitting there. You can have them for an hour to yourself, 45 minutes of one-on-one -on -one time with any of these guys. And I post the... I post who's in the labs on the door. Like right. on these days, these people are available. And I'm telling you, the first two, three weeks, there's, there's usually nobody in there. I, I used to do open labs myself when I, you know, I put myself in there. We're, and I try to put three people in there because I know how busy it gets. Like it's busy. today, yeah, right? Yeah, today was crazy. Packed. Yeah. It used to only have two docs in there. Oh, geez. So, you know, yeah, one of the things I did is I said, you know, look, we want you adjusting in the, in the, in the, well, let me back up. When I first got here, open lab is where you adjusted. But there wasn't a lot of adjusting going on in the actual labs, like the actual 
lab for guns today or B or a diversified one. That was all instructional, and then they'd say, go to open lab and, and, adjust. and adjust. And I came back and said, actually, students want that instructor to be giving, th right? I want that instructor to guide me through this. Yeah. So we started really trying to open up the lab time or, or make places decrease the number of moves so that you could have time in labs. It doesn't always work out. I know that. And it, sometimes it's just difficult. But the idea was let's, get, let's make opportunities for students to adjust in the class itself and then go to open lab and, and try to hone those skills. What I see is sometimes students forget about those first couple of weeks. Man, if you're having some challenges or you, man, I really need to work my cervical chair. Man, Dr. Curry and Dr. Casey are sometimes in there doing nothing right, on their for phone a couple of weeks, yeah. you know, waiting, like yeah. show up, man. And they're sometimes in there two or three times a week. I, I have Dr. Curry in there, I think three times a week. And you know, guy's a master at the cervical he's chair, man. He's got a great chair move, okay? I've, I've been adjusted by him, he's got a great chair move. That's who you want to work with, you know. So sometimes it's hard. I'm just to tell you, as as instructors, as professors, when students say, "We really want this, we really want this," but we don't see them doing the extra steps sometimes. Right. So they these take advantage of it when it's actually there so, for them. So I do have a, a little bit of concern that oh, full spine labs are coming. I don't need to do open lab, and it's like actually no, you actually may need to do it more. So, so you're not weak in every single exactly. thing you try. Right. So you walk in going, you know what, I've been working on these things. This is the place I really need help. So we're, we're trying to get better at it. We know, we know we've got room for improvement. Um, there's better ways to go. We've simplified things in some areas. I'm sure it will continue to kind of, you know, get a little bit better dialed, more dialed in. Yeah. Um, well, you've got the, found, you're creating the foundation right. so that you can start to refine right. it as you right. go. Right. And keep in mind that everybody needs to have a current CMR, they got to have active care going on. You need to be under care. Labs, open labs, your reciprocal thing, that's not care. That's the learning environment. And that's what this is about. This is about learning, helping you learn as a student these skills you say you want, yeah. right? And you got to have to be the chiropractor you want to be. So you need to be under care, but that's not the same thing as getting adjusted every now and then in open lab, right? Yeah, totally different. Yeah. yeah, you've experienced it. You know what I'm talking about. I've, yeah, I've experienced, <laughs> that, yeah. I've experienced yeah. it too. This, this whole thing actually reminds me from uh, reading Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits I Have yep. Effective People, and yep. tells the story about when he was consulting for a big bank, and they had like this three-week long internship period. Right. And then he comes in and he he distills everything down to these specific skills that you have to know before you can actually become the VP of this bank because they hire the, all the interns to yeah, do that. Yeah. And um, and so it takes people 10 days instead of three weeks because they're skill focused. And so they're just focused on honing those skills and then you know, they're out much quicker because it's mm -hmm. clear what's actually expected yeah. of them instead of just kind of a numbers game, do your three weeks time. Right, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it, you know, and, and the, the other part of it is you learn at a different rate than somebody else. Totally. So, you know, you can't say in 10 weeks you're going to know this, in 10 weeks you're going to know that. It's going to take you some time to build those skills. Yeah. You know, especially going to break, you come back and you go, what happened? Seriously. Right? So you need that repetition, you need that. You know.